Whether you want to put a graphic text or an image on any kind of material, be it a cloth, wood or even a brick wall in the most realistic fashion possible, well, this is the video for you. But here's the thing, as we begin the process to do that, we're going to find out that not every method works in every situation and that's pretty evident. So we're going to explore various methods with some awesome real world examples so that by the end of the tutorial, you begin to understand the concept and grasp the science of how it is working so that no matter whatever image is being thrown to you, you amaze yourself every single time. And that's one of the biggest goals of photography and Photoshop in general that you amaze yourself first. So without any further ado, let's get started, shall we? Whenever you're superimposing an object over a background, keep in mind that every object is different, every background is different. So methods will differ from object to object. Will you remember every single method? There are hundreds of methods to do that. Will you remember every single one of them? No, if you know the science, okay, if you know the basic concepts, you will be able to do anything in Photoshop. You just have to think it. So for the first example, I have this background and I'm going to keep this constant background in all of our examples. This is a red fabric background. It's pretty folded. And if you zoom in, you see there's a texture here. All right. This has a nice texture and this also has a lot of folds. So our first job is to bring the object straight into Photoshop. All right. So this image I have already opened, open the background in Photoshop, which I've already done, then import the object. Or what you can do, you can even drag and drop that inside of Photoshop. So uh, I want to drop in my transparent logo. And let's make it a little bigger. All right. To make anything bigger or smaller from center to transform from center, press and hold shift and alt or shift and option if you're using a Mac and then drag watch. It transforms from center. Now, what's our first objective? Our first objective is to adjust this logo according to bumps. Before we touch highlights and shadows, we need to adjust this logo according to the bumps. All right. Now, if you look at it, let me just turn this layer off. Okay. This has two kind of bumps, small bumps and big bumps. Have a look. These are small bumps. Okay. These texture and these are big bumps. Okay. So we need to take care of both of the bumps. If we just take care of one of them, it's going to look unrealistic. It might look realistic, but if you zoom in, it has to look pixel perfect all right so to make those bumps visible in the logo all you need to do make a duplicate of the background okay so this is a different kind of duplicate okay click on the background okay make sure that layer is selected just the background all right click on this grid kind of thing okay and click duplicate layer now once you click on it select new from the document select new you want to create a new document and that document is going to be a displacement mask okay all right so create a new document from it once you do that name it big bumps okay big bump now let's just click okay now what we need to do we need to go to image adjustments desaturate. We just want to keep the bump information, the depth information here. We don't want the color information. Okay. Because we want that information to be transferred to that logo. All right. So now we just want the big bumps to be considered, not the small bumps. So how about blurring out the small bumps? Makes sense, right? All right. So let's first unlock this layer. Okay, click on this lock, just unlocks this layer. I always do that. This helps me with a lot of stuff. All right, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. All right, increase the blur to the point where all you can see are the big bumps. Okay, not the small ones. Okay, this is way beyond too much. All right, let's just lower it down. Okay, I think this value would be fine. 20 is fine. Or maybe 15? What do you say? All right, 15 is good too. All right, click OK. Now let's save it. 
All right, the file goes to save as. I insist you that you create a folder for this. Okay, create a folder for displacement masks. But what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna save it in desktop. All right, so I'll save it as bigbum.psd. Make sure it's psd. Okay, desktop save. Okay, done. Maximize compatibility. Okay, all right, good. Now let's close it and let's create one more duplicate of this. Click on this duplicate layer same process new and name this small bumps snap small bumps all right click ok and this time what you have to do just unlock the layer go to filter other high pass okay let's zoom in and set the value to a point where you can see just the small bumps without any color keep this in mind small bumps without any color if you increase the value too much you begin to see a little bit of red colors you don't want that you want the value to be small without any colors okay so i think this is a nice value 1.8 something okay to be double sure about this having no color all you, what you can do you can go to image adjustment desaturate all right now Go ahead, save it as small bump. Okay, small bumps, let's save it. Now, we need to apply these bumps to this layer, okay? Make sure that this layer is a smart object so that everything we do to it is non-destructive, all right? So to make sure it's smart object, you'll see a logo here, okay? If you have dragged and dropped it, by default, it is a smart object, but if you have copied and pasted it from another Photoshop document, it might not be. So it's a good practice to right click on it and convert to smart object, okay? Make sure you click on it and if it's showing the logo, then it's already a smart object. Now, time for displacement. Time for applying the bumps to this. Go to filter, distort and displace. First, apply the small bumps, then apply the big bumps, okay? Keep the value to 1010, it's fine. We can change it later, why? Because this is non-destructive, okay? Click OK and select small bumps. All right, now let it apply the filter and let's zoom in and see what has happened. As you can see that this texture has been applied to this logo. Now without this te texture, if I just turn it off, if I just turn the smart filter off, it's totally straight doesn't look realistic and if I if you turn it on you begin to see the texture now if you want more texture in the edges you can always double click on displays and set the value to around 15 click OK and select small bumps again to see how it looks with accentuated effects so if you are happy with this one okay you're good all right now it looks a little more realistic now what we want are the big bumps to be considered and one of the greatest things of smart objects is that you can apply multiple filters so we can apply displacement again right awesome awesome so make sure this is selected go to filter distort and displace again all right now this time let's switch back to 10 I think 10 would be fine, but how do we know? It's just trial and error. Select the big bump, click OK. All right, let it apply the effect now. This has adjusted itself according to the big bumps. As you can see, there was a bump here. This has adjusted, there was a bump here. This has adjusted itself, all right? This has done a pretty good job, but if you want a little bit more of bumps, double click on the second displays and set the value to around 15. And let's see what it does. Big bump, open, let's see. All right, so this is, the bumps are more pronounced. Yeah, this is more realistic, I think. Also, there's one more tip I can give you. Sometimes there are bumps which are wrongly measured by this. For example, here, the bump should have been a little different. Also, if you look, this is a pretty good job. You don't need to do that, but if you, want to, if you wanted to tweak it to be on the safer side, if you wanted to tweak it, you can always do that. Still, it's a smart object. You could go to Edit, Puppet Warp, all right? Then Puppet Warp will appear. You cannot see anything. Make sure you uh, this is checked. Show message checked, all right? Now, you can adjust the bumps if you want. 
So one of the first things that you need to do when you plan to do puppet warp is that make an anchor point in the middle click in the middle this makes an anchor point there make an anchor point on all the four sides all right now let's zoom in and we can set the bumps if you want you can set the bumps if you want right so if you want a, a little bump here you can bump it up just a little bit and there you go okay and yeah, while you're zoomed in, if you want to move over to different locations, what you can do, you can press the space bar, your cursor changes, and then you move in. So let us look for other places where we would need it. Okay, so here, suppose you need it, you click an anchor point, you adjust it if you want. Okay. So that's one of the ways of doing it. But displacement does a pretty good job. But if you want to take it a step further, well, go for it. The manual is always the best. It totally depends upon how much time you want to give to it. For example, I just spotted a thing. All right, if you don't want to see this triangle kind of thing, you can always check this out. Show ma mesh, just check this out and you know, you'll never see it. All right, so we need to adjust it just a little bit. Okay. All right, something like this. And once you are done with it, once you're satisfied with it, hit enter. And there you go. You have the puppet warp as a smart filter. Now what you need to do, you need to, now this is the most essential part. And this is the one which brings out the reality in the logo. All right, right click on it and go to blending options. In the blending options, since this is white, you want shades of dark here okay so if you want shades of dark here so drag the slider from the left to the right of the underlying layer because on the underlying layer what do we have we have the background and we want to take the darker areas of the background as a reference point okay because we are superimposing this on the background so let's drag it from the left and stop where it is too much and where it is eating up the logo just stop there I will stop at this point okay and after that press and hold alter option click on the slider and drag it further watch isn't this amazing this looks so realistic all right this is cool this is awesome this looks really nice but you know what this will just work with white objects so I gotta give you some more examples so make sure you stay tuned okay and one of the other problems that if you don't want this is looking beautiful in this one but as you can see there is a red kind of tint right if you zoom in let's have a look in the shadows we have a red shadow and we don't want that we just want pure white in here so there's a lot more to do than this we'll talk about this in the next example for this this looks pretty awesome okay all right, I think I don't need the puppet warp, so I'll just simply delete it. Okay, it looks better that way. All right, sometimes you might need the puppet warp if you really want to do that manually and not apply the displacement map. All right, so let's look at the next example. And next example is also the logo. But here's the thing, that's the complete logo, not the transparent one. Have a look. I know that's a very cheap way of marketing, but <laughs> that's that's the way it is all right so the reason i chose my logo first i'm going to choose other logo at the end because my logo has black and white the most extreme colors so that you get a better understanding of what to do and how to deal with extremes in your images all right so let's make it a little big okay so i'm trying to make a point here i've just turned off the transparent logo and let's apply the same displacement really quickly uh, we would go to filter distort displace 15 15 okay let's just do that uh, any random number small bumps first you applied that then we go to filter distort displace 15 15 fine big bumps second now we're done for it now if we do the same thing in this this is not going to work if I go to blending options okay and drag the slider from the left watch watch 
this looks good in the white areas but it does hell to the black areas why the black areas don't need shadows they're already dark that's why I wanted to show you an extreme logo so that you understand the fact that darker areas don't require shadows they're already dark okay darker areas require highlights while brighter areas don't require highlights because it's already bright we didn't pull the slider from the right for the white area Yes, did we know right so what is the solution the solution is we need to treat the white or the bright area separately and the dark area separately but how do we make this layer separate simple if you remember from my previous tutorial on blending modes you would remember that multiply blending mode and screen blending mode are both opposites of each other if you select a multiply blend mode, it's going to delete everything which is 100% white, retain everything which is 100% black and darken the grays. And the screen does just the opposite. It retains which anything which is 100% white, deletes anything which is 100% black and brighten up, brightens up the grays. Alright, so what if we make two layers instead of one, okay? and set the blend mode of one layer to multiply and one layer to screen that way we will have the brighter layer and the darker layer separate and wouldn't that be amazing and we would be able to treat them separately all right once you have applied the displacement maps and puppet warp if you are applying it let's make a copy of this and change the blend mode of the layer which is above okay so there are two layers two duplicate layers the layers which is above change the blend mode to screen okay change the blend mode of the layer which is below change it to multiply where is that okay now we have got the logo back because why because multiply and screen are the opposites of each other now if i just turn off this one you see just the black areas let's just name it multiply so that we have a better understanding and let's just name it screen so once we do that we've got the logo back and if I turn this off watch we just have the darker areas now let's treat it separately let's go to the blending options and what is the thing which darker areas need it needs the highlight so drag the slider from the right okay there you go you begin to see highlights just at the moment when you begin to see it just stop and press and hold alter option click on the slider and drag it away a, a little bit to the right now you might want to tweak it just a little bit okay something like this and this looks pretty nice i think all right this looks good click okay now let's treat the white areas so right click on it blending options the screen layer right and drag the slider from the left the same way we did for the transparent logo there you go okay it looks good now let's address the problem with the red now this looks pretty good this looks pretty nice awesome but this has that red tint on uh, in the highlights and the shadows and we don't want that we know this is a black and white logo we want to remove all of this so what if we remove color from this area in the background won't that work let's see all right first off we need to understand that we just need black and white in that particular area so we need a selection there how to select that area press and hold controller command and click on that logo this selects the area of the logo now make sure you select the background layer okay select it then create a new adjustment layer okay click on this gray uh, white circle kind of thing and select uh, black and white adjustment layer this will create a black and white only in this area isn't this looking amazing now we don't have that tint that red tint that we had just look at the before and after let me just let me just turn this off okay we have the red thing and we don't want that we don't want other colors to affect the brand colors okay so we would just turn it on and there you go 
Just to show you that the black and white thing does not work in every situation or with every kind of graphic, in this example, I'm going to show you colored graphics to show you what to do in those situations. All right, so let's drag and drop it into Photoshop and let's make it a little bigger. All right, let's apply the displacement as we would do normally. Filter, distort. Ah, uh, where is that? I'm losing track of things. All right, displace 15, 15. First, the small bumps. Then go ahead. When it once it applies, then go ahead. Filter, distort, displace. 15, 15, fine. Big bump. All right, it's applied. Now, if I okay. We don't need to create two separate layers here. Multiply and screen. You know why? Because the colors are neutral. They're not too bright, not too dark. They're in the middle. All right. And when you have such things, when you don't have extremes in your graphic, you don't need to create two separate layers. All right. So let's just right click on it and go to blending options. And this time, since this is a neutral color, we need to drag it from the left and right. By neutral, I mean this doesn't it, this doesn't have too much highlights or shadows. This is somewhere in the middle. All right. So uh, let's drag it a little bit from the left and okay, this is fine. Drag it a little bit from the right and fine. Now, you know what? As you can see, this is looking pretty good around this area where it has yellow and orange. You know why? Because red, since the background is red, keep this in mind, since the background is red and yellow and orange are the colors next to red in a color wheel, they're looking nice because red is a corresponding color and it's giving them the perfect shadows and the highlights. But when it comes to blue, blue is a color which is opposite to red, a little bit opposite to red in the color wheel and it's not getting the corresponding shadows and highlights. And it's looking kind of fake. So what do we want here? We want corresponding colors in the background. We want complementary colors in the background. Let's forget this layer for a second. Let's just turn it off. How do we get corresponding complementary colors in the background? Let's just make a copy of this one. Okay, a pure copy of this one. And this will allow us to give the corresponding colors. Now let's delete all the smart filters from this. Okay. So this doesn't have any smart filters. Let's go to blending options, set everything to normal. And this is just the layer. And if I just turn the blend mode to color, this gives me the corresponding colors. And this has not changed much in this area. Why? Because these colors already match to red. All right. So what we would want to do, we would uh, want to name it, say color and place it just above the background layer and just below the logo layer, the actual logo layer. And now let's turn it on and wash. Now it looks more natural in this, but we need a tweaking. We need to tweak it a little bit. Let's go back to blending options for this layer, for the logo layer. And let's tweak it just a little bit. All right. Now it's kind of looking natural. Watch, watch in these areas. Watch. Okay. A little bit from the right. There you go. Now watch, you're getting highlights, proper highlights in these areas. All right. Click OK. Now, if you think this color layer is too much, you can always play with the opacity. Watch. This is not looking nice. Let's just increase it just a little bit. All right. To this point. Yes. Now without this, you see no right color coming out here. With this, we see the color coming out. All right. So that's all for this one. And now let's move on to the next and last example. And last things are always mega massive because the last example is an image. It's going to have highlights. It's going to have shadows. It's also going to have a lot of color. Now, how do we deal with it? It's mega. It's going to be fun. So let's just do it. For the next example, we're going to drag the picture of the model over this drapery kind of stuff in Photoshop. And let's make it a little bigger. Okay, so you like the size? That's pretty good. Now, in this example, I'm not going to apply the displacement filter, distort, displace. If you want, you can do that. But since this is a face, I personally want to do it later. So let's go ahead with the other steps. Now, this image has highlights. This image has shadows and also color. So what do we need to do? We need to create three duplicates. Okay, so let's make three duplicates of this. 
Okay, if you want to know how to create duplicates, do it just the way I did right now. Drag and drop it into this one or you can press Ctrl or Command J once and again. And name one screen in the same order. Multiply and this one color. Okay, now change the blend mode to the same names. Multiply screen color. All right, now we need to treat every layer separately. All right, so let's go to the screen one, right click, go to blending options, and in screen, we pull the sliders from where? From left, because screen is about brightness, screen is about the highlights. We want the shadows in those. Let's drag it from the left, this is too much. This is fine. All right. Once you're at this position, press and hold alter option, click on it, and then drag. Maybe we want up to this extent is fine. All right, this is good. Click OK. Screen is done. Now move on to multiply. Right click on it, blending options. We want the highlights. All right, so the highlights. Okay, just a little bit from here. Drag. There you go. Okay. It's looking pretty awesome. Now, we are done with the shadows and highlights and color. Now, all we need to do in the color layer is to play with opacity and see which one looks good to you. This is without any color. You see, you can see the red tint, right? You don't want that. So let's just increase it bit by bit to see which one looks good to you. Too much of it doesn't look too much good. I think 59 looks good in this situation. All right, now if you wanna make it, this has become a little darker. If you want to make it a little lighter, you can go to the screen layer and add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and make it a little brighter. And if you do that, you can see that everything is becoming bright. You don't want that. You just want the brightness to be affected in the screen layer. So press and hold alt or option if you're using a Mac, click on this line which is just between these two layers, screen and brightness contrast adjustment layer. And that way it will be applied just to this one. All right, so this brightens up stuff. There you go, without it, with it, a little bit of brightness. So that's pretty much it. That's how you superimpose or put graphic text or an image or any kind of thing on any kind of material in the most realistic fashion possible. Whether it's clothes, this was clothes in this example. You can do this with a brick wall, you can do this with a metal plate, rusted plate, anything you want. You just have to play with displacement and blend modes and most importantly, blend if in blending options. Three things and you're the master of superimposition. I don't know whether that's a word but that's pretty much wraps up the session. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe click on that bell notification icon so that you don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.